We continue on today with Chapter 2, Special Principles of Miracle Workers. The miracle abolishes the need for lower order concerns. Since it is an out of pattern time interval, the ordinary considerations of time and space do not apply. When you perform a miracle, I will arrange both time and space to adjust to it. A clear distinction between what is created and what is made is essential. All forms of healing rest on this fundamental correction in level perception. Never confuse right and wrong mindedness. Responding to any form of error with anything except a desire to heal is an expression of this confusion. The miracle is always a denial of this error and an affirmation of the truth. Only right-mindedness can correct in a way that has any real effect. Pragmatically, what has no real effect has no existence. Its effect, then, is emptiness. Being without substantial content, it lends itself to projection. The level adjustment power of the miracle induces the right perception for healing. Until this has occurred, healing cannot be understood. Forgiveness is an empty gesture unless it entails correction. Without this, it is essentially judgmental rather than healing. Miracle-minded forgiveness is only correction. It has no element of judgment at all. The statement, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, in no way evaluates what they do. It is an appeal to God to heal their minds. There is no reference to the outcome of the error. That does not matter. The injunction, be of one mind, is a statement for revelation readiness. My request, do this in remembrance of me, is the appeal for cooperation from miracle workers. The two statements are not in the same order of reality. Only the latter involves an awareness of time, since to remember is to recall the past and the present. Time is under my direction, but timelessness belongs to God. In time we exist for and with each other. In timelessness we coexist with God. You can do much on behalf of your own healing and that of others if, in a situation calling for help, you think of it this way. I am here only to be truly helpful. I am here to represent him who sent me. I do not have to worry about what to say or what to do because he who sent me will direct me. I am content to be wherever he wishes, knowing he goes there with me. I will be healed as I let him teach me to heal. And from the workbook, Lesson number 12. I am upset because I see a meaningless world. The importance of this idea lies in the fact that it contains a correction for a major perceptual distortion. You think that what upsets you is a frightening world, or a sad world, or a violent world, or an insane world. All these attributes are given it by you. The world is meaningless in itself. These exercises are done with eyes open. Look around you, this time quite slowly. Try to pace yourself so that the slow shifting of your glance from one thing to another involves a fairly constant time interval. 
Do not allow the time of the shift to become markedly longer or shorter, but try instead to keep a measured, even tempo throughout. What you see does not matter. You teach yourself this as you give whatever your glance rests on equal attention and equal time. This is a beginning step in learning to give them all equal value. As you look about you, say to yourself, I think I see a fearful world, a dangerous world, a hostile world, a sad world, a wicked world, a crazy world, and so on, using whatever descriptive terms happen to occur to you. If terms which seem positive rather than negative occur to you, include them. For example, you might think of a good world, or a satisfying world. If such terms occur to you, use them along with the rest. You may not yet understand why these, quote, nice adjectives belong in these exercises, but remember that a, quote, good world implies a, quote, bad one, and a, quote, satisfying world implies an, quote, unsatisfying one. All terms which cross your mind are suitable subjects for today's exercises. Their seeming quality does not matter. Be sure that you do not alter the time intervals between applying today's idea to what you think is pleasant and what you think is unpleasant. For the purposes of these exercises, there is no difference between them. At the end of the practice period, add but I am upset because I see a meaningless world. What is meaningless is neither good nor bad. Why then should a meaningless world upset you? If you could accept the world as meaningless and let the truth be written upon it for you, it would make you indescribably happy. But because it is meaningless, you are impelled to write upon it what you would have it be. It is this you see in it. It is this that is meaningless in truth. Beneath your words is written the word of God. The truth upsets you now, but when your words have been erased, you will see his. That is the ultimate purpose of these exercises. Three or four times is enough for practicing the idea for today. Nor should the practice periods exceed a minute. You may find even this too long. Terminate the exercises whenever you experience a sense of strain. So again today we are releasing a major perceptual distortion and beginning to see more deeply that the sleeping mind is impelled to write upon the world what it wants. It's a version of lesson number two, I have given everything I see all the meaning it has for me. But today, in Lesson 12, we're incorporating the idea as well. Lesson number 5, I am never upset for the reason I think, with a connection to meaninglessness. Seeing something that's not there, but the upset being connected completely to the sense of meaninglessness and not to meanings that have been given to the world, such as fearful world or dangerous world, hostile world, sadness, wickedness, craziness. These seeming meanings are just projections that have been assigned 
to various persons, places, events, circumstances. We're moving into see the connection between upset, which could be fear, guilt, pain, shame, anything, irritation, annoyance, and meaningless thoughts, and the meaningless world that seems to outpicture from these thoughts. So today we settle in and we loosen again from false causation with the reminder that I am upset because I see a meaningless world. The sleeping mind has forgotten meaning because it has forgotten itself as the Christ and it has forgotten God our Creator and Source, and having complete amnesia about this divine meaning, love, infinite nature, then meaninglessness is a sign of being lost, or powerless, or health, helpless, confused. And these confused feelings stir up a lot of unrest in the mind. And therefore these busy thoughts, these meaningless thoughts, and the meaningless world that they seem to outpicture is, is a distractive device against being still and going within, dropping sinking, diving deep into a stillness that is so profound that time goes by without its touch upon this precious stillness. We are releasing all attempts to hold on to meaningless thoughts and a meaningless perceptual world of linear time and space. Time and space will never content the Holy Son of God. Holiness is our natural inheritance, it's our joy, it's our everlasting nature. And nothing of time and space is needed to experience our holiness right now, this holy instant. So, as you seem to move through the day, watching watching the thoughts, watching the images, seeing the sameness of the images and these thoughts. Remember the lesson for today. I am upset because I see a meaningless world.